evening. My name is Lawrence Lewis, um, uh, Judge Walker, Judge Harris, I apologize. Judge Har Harris called me and uh, he left a message and asked if I could speak uh, about a certain uh, topic. And I'm sort of sitting here listening. I know everyone here on the stage. I've worked with them for a number of years. I, I opened my practice in 2000 in, uh, in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I've worked with uh, Judge Waller. I've seen everybody on the bench. Ayanna and I have battled a little bit uh, in court. Um, and, and, and I'm going to say a little bit different things than I think some of the other people are saying here on the stage. Let me say this about uh, social media. Get off social media. <laughs> Everything is not for you. Everything is not for you. Hot cars at 400 miles an hour when you buy them for your son at 19. Maybe that's not for him. Especially if you know he already got a testosterone problem. Everything is not for you. It's really just that simple. I don't know why everybody's on social media. Certain people, they, they're going to work fine on social media. Just like there's going to be certain people that drink at 21 and never have a problem with drinking. But you know if you've got an obsessive compulsive personality, drinking might not be for you. Everything is not for you. That's what I have to say. I'm not really on social media. My children are homeschooled. I have the privilege of having a 12-year-old boy and a 9-year-old boy. That's how I know there's a God. Because I don't know too much about women, but I understand boys. I understand boys. 90% of the people that are in the criminal justice system are male. 90% of my clients are male. And although we're talking to you parents, I sort of really don't want you to talk to boys. You have to sort of show boys. My wife complains all the time, how is it that Alex and Andrew listen to you and they're not really listening to me? You're talking to them too much. Just tell them and walk away. Or tell them and then make them. That's it. Stop talking, talking, talking. It's too much. Mr. Thornton said something very important. He went down to Dominican Republic. He had a school that he was building out there. We're going down to the Dominican Republic in July because my oldest 12, who's batting 650, believes that he wants to be a shortstop. Well, they make shortstops in the Dominican Republic, so we're going to find out if he really wants to be a shortstop when we get down there in July. I'm tired of talking to him about he's blessed. He can't understand he's blessed. He's ridden in the back of a European uh, luxury sedan his whole life. He doesn't understand anything about being blessed. He won't understand blessed till we go down to the Dominican Republic and we live with these folks up in this bed and breakfast because we're not staying at the hotel by the beach. And when we live like that for about 10 days, then he will understand. I'm just telling you about boys. Boys, you cannot continue to talk to them. You got to show boys. That's how you do it with boys. Anyway, Judge Harris left a message at my office and I got the message because I'm super busy. Most of what I do is felonies. Uh, I represent the 15-year-olds, 14-year-olds who are charged with the horrendous crimes. Uh, rape, aggravated child molestation, armed robbery, trafficking cocaine. So uh, while the parents are angry when they come see Ms. Leary, the parents are crying when they come see me because his life is basically over when they come see me or, or, or they actually start to believe that his life is over. And that's most, mostly what I try anyway. Judge Harris called, he said, uh, I want you to come and I want you to talk about sexting. Sexting? What the? What's sexting? <laughs> oh, you mean porn. Porn. Okay, that's you want me to come talk about porn? See, I don't have to worry about Mr. Thornton stealing that. He might steal some talk about driving. He's not going to talk about no porn. He's not talking about porn. I don't know why you want to talk about porn. Sexting is porn. That's what we're talking about. Porn. Let's be very clear about that. And nobody wants to talk about porn. Nobody wants to talk about porn. Sexting is a term that's made up by the media to make you parents feel comfortable about buying your children iPhones. Because if they say your child is looking at porn on your iPhone, you'd be like, I'm not buying no iPhone. But sexting is a cute little term that they can tell you. You'd be like, hee hee, sexting. They talk about porn. Porn. The, the term sexting is this combination of sex and texting. When some people talk about it, they'll talk about uh, sort of sexual, sexualized talk. But we're still talking about boys and girls, so sexualized talk is going to eventually lead to send me a picture. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about, we talk about nudity. We're talking about porn. I haven't had a sexting case. The, the sexting law has, it, they got sexting laws on the book. It's not called sexting. Uh, under OCGA 161280A, they have distributing obscene material on 161281 uh, section, and they got distributing material depicting nudity or sexual contact, uh, 
sexual uh, conduct and on uh, OCGA 1612 100.1, they talk about the crime of electronic, electronically furnishing obscene material to minors. That's the, that third one is, a, is, a, is, I have one of those. And, and I've been practicing for, this starts my 14th, 14th year this February. And I've just seen that first, uh, uh, it's like showing porn to a minor. And I got it in the context of an of a aggravated child molestation case. Um, and uh, that's the first time I've seen that charge. You understand? I, I, I probably handle about anywhere between 225 and 200 cases a year. Most of what I handle is major felonies, a few misdemeanors, but most of it's major felonies. That's the first time I've seen it. Most of those, what you would call sexting laws, involve misdemeanors. And I really haven't seen a whole lot of those misdemeanors come out of uh, Rosanna Sabo's office. My fear is not. Ms. Rosanna Zabo, as the solicitor, will start prosecuting your children. My fear is that somebody out of the DA's office who's young, just got out of law school, wants to make a name for themselves, is going to charge your child with something that sounds like a felony for the distribution of these of the porn. That's my fear. Now, I haven't seen that yet, but I can tell you this. Uh, the law is sort of slow. Look at it like this. If you're sitting on your front lawn, right, looking out at the lawn, technology is like the two the two little squirrels scampering around the lawn, right? The law is like the snail moving across the lawn. That's how the law works. The law is always going to be behind the technology. The technology is driving everything else. When we start talking about sexting, when we start talking about texting, open up your child's phone. Do you even know what the, what the codes stand for? BMCRTT, do you even know what that means? And by the time you figure out what that means, by the time some expert gets on the stage and tells you what that means, they've already switched that code to some symbol, some infinity RP2. You don't know what that means. And by the time you figure out what that means, they've already used uh, this new app. I just found out about it last week. Anybody know about Snapchat? Let, raise your hand if you know about Snapchat. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Snapchat, that's where, that's where she takes a picture, click, click. And then she sends it, right? She sends it, and after he opens it up, it explodes like Mission Impossible, so only he can see her divineness. <laughs> only he can see it, except, except with screenshot, boom, boom! You can save it, and then you can send it to your friends. So that doesn't really work either, if you think it's just for his eyes only. We talking about porn. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about porn. And, 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 and I, you already know, I don't like talking. I like showing. Oh, okay, I can't do that. Can't do that. So we're going to do our best with a little bit of talking. When we start talking about OCGA, texting, 1612 talks about a person commits the offender, offense of distributing obscene material when he sells, lends, rents, or, or otherwise disseminates to any person any obscene material of any description knowing the obscene nature thereof. And when we start talking about obscene material, they got it defined. Material is obscene to the average person applying contemporary community standards taken as a whole uh, when it predominantly appeals to the pure interest, that is a shameful, morbid interest in nudity, sex, or excretion. Morbid interest, well that's all men. Morbid interest in nudity, are you kidding me? That's everybody. That's when you start talking about sex, then that's that that's going to cover it. That's a misdemeanor. That's something that Ron Valeri is ultimately going to be handling uh, up until the time somebody decides, hey, I'm going to make this thing a felony. You saw her list, right? You saw what it included, right? Some DUI, some marijuana. She didn't have any sex charges in there because although the sex charges are on the books. Nobody's really trying to push that issue right now of actually prosecuting anybody that's sending any of the um, any of the sexual photos. So that's not really the big thing that's going on. The lawmakers, when you start talking about sexting, and there's a lot of there's a lot of for me troubling things about sexting, independent of the prosecution uh, of sexting. When you start talking about young people, whether you talk about a 17 year old that's sexting, or you're talking about a 23-year-old that's sexting, um, some, there's, there's some real problems. And, and one of the problems is I see sort of the trend. In 2006, there was a massive overhaul of uh, the sex offense laws in 2006. It, 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 it sort of came, and it was huge. 
but you really didn't hear anything about it. In 2006, rape, which used to be punishable by a mandatory minimum 10, became life. Life means 30 years before you're eligible for parole. 30 years before you're eligible for parole. And you might think, well, you know, hey, if you rape somebody, you deserve to go to prison for 30 years. I agree. But what about if you just accused of rape? Oh, my goodness. Aggravated child molestation, aggravated sexual battery, aggravated sodomy, all of that was a mandatory minimum 10, and they tripled the mandatory minimum punishment in one fell swoop under the Gold Dome in 2006. So, so I say, think about that now as we move into this tech sexting thing. As we move into this sexting thing, understand that the attitude in 2006 was we're going to be hard on these sexual predators. I don't know. It's fine. You can call them that. 2006, that was the flavor. They tripled the mandatory minimum punishment. So do I think that at some point in time, they, they're going to start prosecuting sexting laws? Of course, at some point in time, they're going to start, they're going to start prosecuting. Um, but understand, the law is like that snail, and the technology is ultimately like those, uh, like those squirrels scampering about the, about the lawn. Um, here's how I see it's going to come when it comes, and it's coming, the perfect storm. The 14-year-old sends a new Snapchat to the 17-year-old, who of course does a screenshot, saves it, modifies it, photoshops himself into the photo, shares it with a number of his friends. One of the 17-year-olds is caught with it, and of course he rats it out. He rats out that, you know, this other 17-year-old sent it. Perfect storm. One, we got the role of technology, and children, who don't just, who just don't have the judgment yet, understanding the role of technology. We have uh, the lie that's told by the 14-year-old, when the 14-year-old tells, tells the story that the 17-year-old solicited the photo, because that's how it's going to come. Because you don't think anybody telling you the truth, do you? That's what my 12-year-old told me about probably about six months ago, and I got two, and they're almost really polar opposites. The younger one, who's nine, hit a girl in the mouth with a stick when I was on the tennis court, like, oh, I'm just trying to play tennis, relax. He hits the girl in the mouth with a stick, and he's honest to a fault, but I go and I say, you know, what happened? You know, he hit the girl with a stick. Did you try to throw it at her? No, I tried to hit her in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Was it, was it, was it, was it, was it, was it by accident? Were you playing? No, no, she was just singing and I just hit her in the mouth. <laughs> That's it, he's just gonna tell the truth. You understand? It just is what it is. Conversely, I'm asking the, you know, the 12-year-old, hey, you, why would he, why would I ever tell him myself? That's his position. Why would I ever voluntarily tell him myself? He look at the denial, he's stupid. Why would I ever voluntarily tell him myself? And so, when the 14-year-old is approached, and of course, you know, oh, this is very serious, it's all my friends do it. Oh, this is very serious. What, what do you think she's going to tell you? Oh, yeah, I just decided to take a selfie. Everybody knows the selfie? All the parents here knows the selfie. Raise your hand. It's called a selfie. you got to understand the terms. You know, uh, I took a selfie, and I decided to send it to this boy who was 17 because, you know, I'm new in school, and I thought that may be a way to eat. She's not going to tell that story. She's not going to tell that story when she's 14. When she's 14, she's going to take that selfie. She's going to send it. And then when she's caught, she's going to tell a lie that involves a 17-year-old soliciting that photo. There it is. You've got an aggressive prosecutor, young, trying to make a name for themselves, trying to make this thing a felony. You've got the lie from the 14-year-old who's taking the selfie, who sent the selfie to the 17-year-old. You have the 17-year-old who doesn't understand the role of technology. Here we go. The perfect storm. The prosecutor then arrests him, and then she charges him. Maybe she, maybe she, maybe, maybe the 17-year-old is crazy enough to actually have his face next to the 14-year-old's breast. <laughs> maybe, maybe when they actually end up taking that selfie. Well, we already, I already know what's coming because any photo that's going to involve a 17 and 17-year-old and 14-year-old, that's going to be child molestation. I already know. I already know that's going to be child molestation. That's going to be sexual offense, sexual offense registry. I already know. That's going to be 5 to 20. And the 17-year-old is an adult. Let me just tell you that flat out. He's, he, so you won't be seeing Judge Waller. And you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be up in Superior Court. If that 17-year-old if that turns 18 before that 14-year-old turns 14, well, now we got a whole nother world. We got a whole nother world that, that ultimately we have to deal with. Um, so I get back to ultimately our homeschool mind. 
Mine are 12 and 9 in their homeschool. Some people say, you mean up to high school? All the way through college. All the way through college. It's a running fight at my house that my 12-year-old doesn't understand why we're watching the 13-inch television. Uncle Jeremy has a 42-inch flat screen in his bedroom. He's got a 55-inch. Why are we watching a 13-inch? Because I've learned something about a 13-inch. It, it, takes a, it takes a 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old about two hours of watching a 13-inch television, and then they turn it off themselves because it's too hard to watch. Everything is not for you. having your children have cell phones. That's really what it's about. I got a cell phone, yes I have a cell phone. Most of the people on the stage know if they really need to reach me, they probably gonna have to either call my office or reach me by beeper. I still have a beeper. <laughs> because I really don't want to be tied to the cell phone. I don't want the cell phone ultimately, uh, ultimately ring it all the time. Um, I understand that they're super convenient. I understand you need to communicate with your children. Uh, um, but the thing that you think that you have, which is control, where you think, okay, I got a direct link to them, I can call them anytime, I can reach them anytime, I think you know, that's a fiction. The cell phone has made my job tremendously easier. I was talking to Roseanne Zabo about that when, when uh, who was that? I think it was, uh, it may have been Ayana was up here talking. Uh, ultimately about robberies. When that iPhone is taken, there's a GPS associated with that iPhone. So they're able to get that iPhone back relatively quickly. During the course of the robbery, they all, my, all my guys love robberies, but they like armed robberies and they like going in with shotguns and they like putting the shotgun to the face and stuff of that nature. But they communicating about it on the text. So by the time I get the case, get actual discovery, get to actually look at the case, that case is locked up. They've got the text messages between the co-defendants. Uh, uh, they've, already, they've already talked to the mama because mama trying to talk to the investigator to, to actually get the investigator to drop all the charges. So mama's already admitted to the investigator, oh, Leroy never goes anywhere without the cell phone. Well, that's, well, that's perfect for him because they're going to do the triangulation on the phone and they're going to put within, within what, 35, 40 yards? They're going to be able to tell exactly where your son was for the last three or four days. The cell phone is making my job tremendously. Leary's worried about, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta make sure he's found not guilty. It's what, for me, it's just the truth. Don't, if you wear, if you sag in your pants and you acting crazy in the street, go to court and act like that. Go to court. Be who you are. Why you be a young person? You be a young person on the street and then, and then you go to court and you're being somebody else. You were on the street and the officer said when he arrested you, you were an a-hole. Now all of a sudden, you, oh yes sir, no sir. <laughs> Make the officer seem like a liar. Be who you are. Be who you are. Go. Listen, be who you are. You know who you are. The same way you act on the road, act when you get up in the courtroom. So take the punishment. Why should you be getting punished like a proper child when you're not a proper child? <laughs> But this is what I say to the parents. First of all, you the parents. So you dictate ultimately the technology that comes and doesn't come into your home. That's the first thing. You decide that you you determine the size of the television. There are no games at the house. I understand. It sounds crazy, but there's no Wii at the house. Not, not my house. There's no PlayStation 2. There's no tablet. There's none of that. There's just none of that. Because I think it's really a problem as we as we into as we into 2014. I understand I'm anti-technology. I understand that. Uh, but this is what I think about. I think about when I left home at 14, 15, I went to prep school up in Jersey. When I left home at 14, 15, at, at 7 in the morning, and didn't come back till 5 at night, my parents had no clue where I was. No clue. Not a clue. And somehow, I survived for 10 hours a day. So I, don't, I really don't understand, mothers, why in a two-hour interview with my client at my office, you call them six times. I really don't understand that. You're not really helping them. 
Your son or daughter, what you want for them? Self-confidence? Self-discipline? Self-motivation? Self-awareness? What you want for them? Because I can tell you this, self-confidence does not come from you as the parent making all the right decisions for your child. You know all the answers, and you giving them all the answers will not develop any self-confidence in your child. And that's ultimately what you want them to have. You want your children ultimately to have self-confidence. And when you call them a mama six, seven times a day, you're stealing their autonomy. Let them buy the wrong dishwashing detergent at the Publix. When they come home, you can talk about it. Please, he taking a picture of it at the Kroger, and she texting it to you, and you're like, no, not that one. Are you for real? Is that for real? Is that for real? Okay, all right, okay, I'm good with that. When they gonna grow up? How about that? When they gonna grow up? 26, 28, 30, 50? They gonna live with you forever? That's why I call the cell phone the virtual umbilical cord. Because mama was really they had to let him go because the doctor's like, we cutting this one. Oh, but I can give him the cell phone back. It's sort of the same thing because I can stay ultimately in, in, in contact with them all the time. In the context of sexting, the cell phone is a problem. I'm going to tell you, see, I didn't give you all my credentials. So you don't know my, all my credentials. So I could just be the naughty guy out here. When I was 16, 17, 16, 17, that was uh, 82, 83. Right? If I wanted to see some nudity, I had to get a magazine. Because at that time, all of the, there was no internet, and all of the videos were at the store. And at the store, first of all, the man wouldn't let you have a video unless you were 18. You had to show ID. But you had to go behind this curtain to get the videos. Oh, it's crazy, because when you go behind the curtain, you don't know who else is coming. coming. Oh, my God. <laughs> You can watch porn with a nudity now. It's just, it's, it's, it's obscene. 16, 17, it was a whole different thing. What I was exposed to at 16, 17, your children now being exposed to at 10 and 11 via the cell phone. They being exposed to it at 10 and 11. And, and, and what's the trade off? You, you're feeling that as long as they're right there at your fingertips and you can call them and they can call you, you can take care of them, they're safe. What's the trade-off to, to them having that type of access to, to that type of early exposure to, uh, to sexually explicit information? My sons and I, 12 and 9, are constructing our set of rules. Because for me, I got about five things that I need to teach them before they ultimately leave the house. Uh, number one, I got to help them pick a spouse. I got to help them pick their friends, and their spouse should be one of their best friends. So I got to help them pick a spouse. I got to teach them how to communicate. I got to help them find work that they uh, enjoy. And I got this little pet peeve about driving, so I got to ultimately uh, teach them how to drive. And our rule number one, in our embarking on self-awareness and our picking this wife is, if she cannot sit quietly with her thoughts for 15 minutes without touching the cell phone, leave her alone. That's rule number one. Rule number one. That's the rule. That's the rule. That's the rule. And, I, and, I, and that's part of the reason I'm probably going to end up staying with my wife because as I watch TV and I see, when we out to dinner and I'm talking, and you pulling out the cell phone? I'm not, oh, you're not stimulating conversation enough. I'm gonna go and just be with my friend for a minute. Are you, are you for real? Are you for real? We on a date, and I'm just trying to picture in my mind being 19 for the, for the gentleman here, because you're a different type of man. You invited the girl to dinner, you drove there to the place, you plan on paying for dinner, and 15 minutes into the conversation, she's like texting with her friend or doing whatever she's doing with her friend. You got, like, that date's gonna continue? Is it going to continue? Because I'm going to the bathroom, and if we haven't ordered anything, I'm going out the back, we're done. Whoever you are, we just get with them. Get with them. So you're a new type, of, listen, this is a new type of man we talk about here that's going to sit there and have her engage in some other conversation that's outside the conversation they have and end up still paying for dinner. That's a new type of man. I don't really want that type of man. 
I don't really want that type of man, which is why I'm trying to raise a different type of man in my house. Because if I'm talking to my son and he pull out the cell phone in the middle of me having a conversation with him, he and I are going to have a real problem. I need you to pay attention. I'm not going to do that much talking because I already told you you should be showing your children, especially boys, as opposed to telling them. But at least when I'm talking to you, I expect you ultimately to be listening to me. I think that, that and, and I'm, I was big on music. I like music. I love music, but I think that the, the cell phone steals a certain amount of downtime that's necessary. I think that there's a certain amount of self-awareness that, that, that washes over you as you sit still with your thoughts for five minutes. Who am I? What am I doing here? What am I doing with my life? And it causes you to just sit for a moment and think. All the people over 40 know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you're under 30, you might not even have a clue what I'm talking about because, uh, oh, I got two minutes. <laughs> this don't seem that exciting. You off someplace else. It, it, life requires you to sometimes just sit for a moment, quiet with your thoughts and think. Is this the best thing for me? Is this what my mother wants or is this what I want? It requires just a moment of thought. So. So I got I to gotta promote the anti-technology thing for a minute. I got to. If your child, it, it, listen, if they're a business person and they're using that phone to make money, more power to them. But if they're using that phone just to update their Facebook status every two minutes, or they're taking a picture of the guy at the line at the post office, oh, look at that ass crack. He got fans hanging on that. And they want to talk about that. That's, that's pure foolishness. They don't have time to do that. They absolutely don't have time to do this book. Judge Harris told me to talk about sexting. Sexting, sexting is a problem. It's a problem in the high schools, but it's a problem that has not been addressed yet. It has not been enforced yet. It will be enforced. It may not be enforced if you're a senior now and you get ready to graduate. It might not be enforced while you're here. It might or might not be enforced when you get down to uh, uh, Georgia State or Georgia Southern if somebody's caught in a sort of unusual or, or, or questionable position. It may become a fallback rather than charging somebody with a sexual offense against the person that's drunk. They may just say, okay, we're gonna charge you with taking the picture of the person that's drunk and disseminating this information uh, against the person's will. I don't know ultimately how it's going to demonstrate itself, but 2006 put me on notice that that there is there's a different there's a different uh, uh, zeitgeist in America now. People, everybody's sexting, everybody's well, I can't say everybody. A number of people are taking selfies. They're disseminating that, and another a number of people are then taking that picture and disseminating it to, to, to their other friends. Once that first person disseminates, so the second person, or third person, or first, fourth person, all those people can be charged. All those people can be charged. And at some point in time, and this is what I believe, at some point in time, either some prosecutor is going to charge somebody a little bit too aggressively in terms of a felony, or somebody's going to ultimately get serious about prosecuting the, 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 the sexting offenses. And obviously what I don't want is I don't want the people that are here to be the test case. See, once the first case comes in, everybody's going to get serious and say, ooh, this, this thing is, this really may not be worth it. But that may be after your son has a, has a, uh, a sexually based offense. That may be after your son or daughter ultimately has a, um, uh, has to register as a sex offender. Um, I'm going to sit down uh, in, in just one moment. We'll be able to answer a number of questions ultimately after, after Judge Wallace speaks. But, but this is what I say to, to young people. Number one, everything not for you. And this is what I say ultimately to parents. How best can I help my child develop the judgment that will carry them through life? My experience with the cell phones and the young people that I've represented, and I've represented probably somewhere almost in the neighborhood of 4,000 people, cell, phone, cell phones aren't helping people develop judgment. They're doing the exact opposite. They're not helping develop judgment. And to, the, to the extent they're not helping develop judgment, I would begin to curtail that. Now, if they need to really get in touch with you, go get some little phone where they can make three phone calls, <laughs> one to 911. They can receive calls. 
Uh, one, but maybe, maybe even then they can only receive 30 minutes worth of calls. One call to 911, one call to, I got boys, so they're not calling me mama. They call in my office or they call in my cell phone because, you know, the umbilical cord got cut, so you and your mama done. You get your call. Me. That's really what everybody up here is talking about. Talk about judgment. How many people should you have in the car? Who should you be associating with? Uh, if you see your son or daughter's in, in, involved with some savory characters, are you going to step in and say something about that? Um, that's what everybody's talking about, judgment. And as a parent, I think the primary goal is to help your children develop judgment. So you just got to ask yourself, I think, at all times, especially with technology, because it comes so fast, and I think it's just it's so, it's so enticing. It, it lures you in. Of course you want the newest thing. Of course you, yeah, you might want, but you don't need it. And so the question then becomes, what's the best way for me to help my child develop their judgment? And, and, and in my position, in terms of what I do and, and who I represent, uh, I'm going to I'm come back a little bit on that, uh, on the cell phone and the cell phone technology. And of course, if you take away the cell phone, then you ain't got to worry no more about sexting. <laughs> Thank you very much.